At International Harvest, the Lord has supreme reign. It, it is, is a church, church where I am taught and, and instructed in the ways of God. I will apply God's Word in my everyday life. And as a result of that application, there will be a transformation. At International Harvest, I will be cultivated to grow and empowered to go as the Spirit of God enables me. The world that I live in shall be changed. My home, school, my workplace shall not be the same because of Jesus the Christ working in me and through me. Amen and amen. Welcome to International Harvest Christian Fellowship Church. Your word of the day is, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And now for your morning announcements. Remember, all in-house activities are canceled, but you still have an opportunity to stay connected. Join us Monday and Wednesday on our prayer conference line. The number will be shared out tomorrow morning. Bible study will be held through a video conference app called Zoom. In order to participate, you'll need to download the app. We encourage you to download this app before the session begins. Step-by-step -step instructions and a video tutorial will be available on our website. God loves a cheerful giver. Pay your tithes and offering online. Visit the website and click the donate tab. You can also text your donation into 817-435-4447. That concludes our announcements for the week. Thank you so much for listening and have a blessed day. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What a wonderful day it is to serve the Lord. And we certainly want to welcome all of our Facebook family, social media family. We're so excited that you are able to join us this morning. Our text this morning comes from 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. We're going to be focused on verses 1 through 12. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. That's 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 through 12. And the Bible reads, after this, the armies of the Moabites, the Ammonites, and some of the Midianites declared war on Jehoshaphat. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army from Eden is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea, and they are already at Hazazan Tamar. Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news and begged the Lord for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judea to begin fasting. So the people from all the towns of Judea came to Jerusalem to seek the help of the Lord. Jehoshaphat stood before the company of Judea and Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of the Lord, and he prayed. O Lord, he said, God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are the ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty, and no one can stand against you. Oh, our God, did you not drive out those who live in this land when your people Israel arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? Your people settled here and built this temple to honor your name. They said, whenever we are faced with cal calamity, such as war, plagues, or famine, we could come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. We can cry out to you to save us, and you will hear us and rescue us. Now see what the armies of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir are doing. You would not let our ancestors invade those nations when Israel left Egypt. So they went around them and did not destroy them. Now see how they reward us. For they have come to throw us out of your land 
which you have given unto us as an inheritance. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are on you, O oh Lord. I want to use briefly for a subject this morning, the subject, Lord, our eyes are upon you. Let's look unto the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for another day. Thank you for another opportunity to stand and to deliver what thus says the Lord. So, Father, I'm out of myself this morning. I declare that I decrease, that you might increase, that I may deliver this assignment, this word that you have placed within my heart onto the people of God. So, Lord, we ask that you would speak the word through this vessel. Be glorified, be magnified, increase in our lives. We love you, we honor you, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Let all of God's people say thank God. Amen. Amen. So here in our text this morning, we find a very familiar scripture that surrounds the acts of Jehoshaphat, who, by the way, was the great-great-grandson of King David. And during this account, Jehoshaphat, who was king of Judea, started receiving some intel that several nations were coming to invade his kingdom. And the Bible says, upon hearing this report, fear grips the heart of Jehoshaphat. The news catches him off guard. He is he's shocked. He is Stunned, he is blindsided because Jehoshaphat is in the midst of just performing everyday tasks. Amen. Ruling and judging his kingdom, Judea. He was at that particular time putting things into place or into position to incure, uh, ensure that there was a season of peace and prosperity within the land. But then a suddenly happened. Amen. A suddenly. Now, if you're watching, put that in the comment block on Facebook. A suddenly happened. Amen. And when suddenly happened, it produces a season of fear and uncertainty. And as it was during the days of Jehoshaphat, so it is today. We are living in a time where the days have suddenly become fearful and uncertain. Fearful and uncertain because we are faced with a pandemic known as COVID-19, better known as the coronavirus. And interestingly enough, beloved, if we as believers are truly connected to God, we would understand that in the midst of all of the panic, in the midst of all of the chaos, that the Lord has truly unveiled the heart of the church and the heart of the nation. As early as January, there were reports and warnings given concerning a virus that showed the characteristics of a globe and circle pandemic that could require governments to take swift action in order to contain it, as early as January. But because it was another nation, because it was another kindred of people's problem, and due to the lack of love and concern and selfishness, Warnings went unheeded. Why? Because there was an illusion of peace and prosperity 
in this land. I mean, the economy was good. The job market was booming. The stock market was at an all-time high. And then a suddenly happened. A spirit of infirmity and fear descends upon the now entire world and shakes everything that can be shaken known to man. The economic system is shaken. The health care system is shaken. The education system is shaken. The entertainment system, the athletic system, and even the system of religious institution, all shaken. I mean, dear God, you can't even go into the grocery store and buy a roll of toilet paper because every man's heart is for himself. And selfishness is at an all-time high. I mean, it just oozes through the pores of the nation. And it's in this type of fall that people of all walks of life saved and unsaved are trying to figure out what in the world is going on. Believers are wrestling with certain aspects of their faith, and the age-old question of theodicy begins to arise again and again. Why, amen, do bad things happen? Where is God? How do you explain God? in the presence of an evil world. I mean, these are some very difficult conversations to be had. But I'm convinced, beloved, that the short answer is this. We have got to get back to the old landmarks of fasting and praying and seeking the face of God in the house of God. The reason that the 21st century church has lost its power is because we have become more concerned about being entertained in church than an authentic move of God in the church. And if we really truly want to see an authentic move of God in the church, then 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 14 must be reactivated in the heart of God's people which said, as my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Isaiah 55 verses 6 and 7 must be reactivated in the heart of the church, which says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man's his thoughts. And let him return. Somebody say return. Return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God for he will abundantly pardon. We serve a merciful God. But we have got to begin those those things, institute those things again. Amen. That would bring the mercy of God, not just back on the church, but up on the entire world. Then and only then will we be able to truly understand what is really going on. I'm reminded of Paul's writing at the church of Thessalonica in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, where he says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write you. But Paul, why do they not need it to be reminded? Why do they need no reminder? It was because they were plugged into the Spirit of God, which caused them to be watchful. He says in verse 2, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, oh, then sudden destruction. Somebody say suddenly. Sudden 
destruction cometh upon them as a travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And here the word of the Lord compares, amen, the intensity of travail of a woman giving birth, amen, the closer to the birth, the stronger the birth pains. And what we are beginning to see in the earth is a travailing taking place. It was seen that the closer that the Lord is coming, the more the earth prevails or travails. Amen. The more there are earthquakes, the more there is pestilence, the more there is rumors of wars. Amen. The more devastation. Amen. And the fact that it's happening more frequently gives us, amen, an indication that Jesus is about to take flight to the sky. Amen. And then he says this to the church in verse 4. He said, but ye, brethren, he says, you are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief. Amen. In other words, you should not be surprised, beloved, about the things that are coming up on the earth. Why? Because verse 5 says you are children of the light and the children of the day. We are not in the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not be asleep. It's time for the church to wake up. Amen. He said, but let us watch and be sober. The 21st century church, our responsibility is to be watchmen on the wall for the entire world. We are the ones that should be interceding. We are the ones that should be praying. We are the ones that should be binding the spirit of darkness, amen, that has been blinding the minds of people that don't know Jesus Christ so that they may see the light of Christ and repent and receive him as Lord and Savior. So Paul reminds us, he said, for they that sleep, sleep in the night. They that be drunken are drunk in the night. He said, but us. He said, let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and a helmet, amen, which is the hope of salvation. And so, saints of God, Paul instructs us as children of the light and day in terms as to how we are supposed to conduct ourselves during these seasons of uncertainty. He says this. He gives us three, three, three points that I'm going to use concerning the instructions. Number one, he says, be sober. Number two, he says, put on the breastplate of faith and love. I like how he, he puts that. He said, put it on. In other words, this is something that you and I must do. I can't put it on for you. You have to choose to put on faith and love. And number three, he says, look on to the hope of your salvation. Now, I, I want to pause for a moment and deal with those three points briefly. Because these are the same concepts that Jehoshaphat demonstrated in 2 Corinthians, the second chapter, when he was faced with a suddenly. Number one, Jehoshaphat was sober. When Jehoshaphat heard of the pending invasion, he operated from a standpoint of sobriety. Amen. The word sobriety means that he recognized the seriousness of the situation. Uh-huh. And consequently, the reason that we are struggling with this uh, 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 corona pandemic now is because no one took, took it really serious when it was first revealed a few months ago. And sadly to say, Millions, thousands, thousands upon thousands of people are dying because we fail to act. Jehoshaphat operated from the standpoint of sobriety. In verses 2, 3, 4, amen, 
He receives the report that a great multitude is coming against him beyond the sea of Syria. And, uh, and the messenger says, and behold, they are already near the border of Judea. Now, look at Jehoshaphat's response in verse 3. Verse 3 says, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout Judea. Now, I like how the scripture reveals that because even though he feared, he knew what to do. <laughs> Amen. It's all right to be fearful at times in terms of respecting what you are up against. And what fear does is fear brings torment. And so what we must do, amen, is stand as a sober man or woman of God and go and seek the face of God. The reason that the world, the governors, amen, the political pundits, they don't know what to do because they're looking to one another for the answer. But the answer will not be found in man. The answer will be found on our faces as we seek the face of God. Woo, glory to God. So he turned his face toward the Lord. Amen. Saints of God, in this season, we must turn our face toward the Lord. That means that we must swell up in God. Amen. James chapter 4 verse 8 says, draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh to you. He says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your heart, ye double-minded. He says what? Humble yourself, verse 10, in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Ah, glory to God. And so in order to swell up, in order to draw nigh unto God, we must increase in our prayer life. We must increase in the study of his word. And as we begin to increase in our relationship with him, discernment concerning this present age, amen, will be deposited within our spirit. Amen. Now, don't always look, amen, to CNN and Fox and MSN for what's going on in the world. The Lord has the ability to speak to you in your prayer closet. And give you the real truth behind what's going on. It's called discernment. But, but if we don't plug in, we don't discern. So it calls for being sober. Not only must we be sober, but number two, we must put on the breastplate of faith and love. Jehoshaphat demonstrated what it meant to walk by faith and love. Amen. Galatians 5, 6b tells us that faith worketh by love. They both go together. You know, saints, I have been preaching about love, and we've been talking about faith, and we've been talking about spiritual disciplines, amen, for several months now. And all of this stuff, amen, that the Lord has instructed us, to give the word of instruction to the people of God is geared and, and, and is given unto us for seasons such as this. I remember telling you that several, several, several weeks ago, amen, that we are living in days, amen, where we're going to find out who is who in the church. Amen. So he says what? Faith worketh by love. And so in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 5 through 8, the Bible says that Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord. And he began to pray. He began to call on the name of the Lord. And he said, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nation? He's acknowledging who God is. The problem, amen, with the world is they do not acknowledge who God is. The Bible says in Proverbs that we must acknowledge him in all our ways, and he will direct our path. Amen. And he continues, he said, your hand is there not power 
and might therein so that no one is able to stand within? Are you not God who, who drove out the nations, who drove out the inhabitants, amen, of this land before your people Israel? Are you not the one that gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And so what he's doing, what, he, what he's doing is he's putting God in remembrance of his covenant. And the word of God is the covenant of God. And it's high time that the people of God put God in remembrance of his word. Amen. He is stirring up his faith, amen, as he's talking to God. He, he, he is stirring up, amen, the, the faith of the people, declaring the word of God out loud. The Bible says, amen, so then faith cometh by what? Hearing, not having heard. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing and hearing by the word of God. You need to turn up the word of God more, amen, than you do CNN. Because the word of God produces faith. CNN and the news media produces fear. And whatever you decide to tune in to more frequently determines what is deposited in your spirit. It's okay to watch, amen, the news just to get a glimpse as to what's going on. But I can't have, amen, the media speaking to me louder than God. Amen. And so when you find yourself in times of fear and uncertainty, in the times of pressure, when you find yourself in the fire, you must stir up your faith by declaring the word of God aloud that your faith level began to increase. Not only must we be sober, not only must we put on the breastplate of faith and love, but we must, number three, continue to look to the hope of our salvation. Jehoshaphat looked to God as his source. After he had proclaimed the word of the Lord, which stirred his faith, he makes a profound statement. In verse 12, he says, Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that's coming against us, nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. Sometimes, Amen. When it suddenly happens, it disorients you. Amen. But we must follow Jehoshaphat's lead. He said, Lord, I acknowledge the situation. I acknowledge that I don't have the resources to handle it. I acknowledge that I don't know what to do. But Lord, my eyes ah, are upon you. I hear the voice of the Lord saying to this generation from Isaiah 45 and 22. He says, look unto me all the ends of the earth and be ye saved. For I am God and there is none else. I hear the voice of the Lord saying to the church in Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. He said, wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses. He said, let us lay aside every weight and sin which doeth easily beset us. And let us run this race, ah, glory to God, with patience, the race that is set before us. And he said, there's a certain way we got to run it. We got to run it, verse 2, what? Looking on to Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Oh, my, 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 my. Beloved in Luke chapter 21, and I'm getting ready to close here. In verse 25 through 28, Jesus reminds us that uncertain times will come. Amen. 
But he gives the church a warning. Amen. I remember Isaiah, he, he told his people, when these things spring forth, Shall you not know it? And he asked the question is, because to the church, none of this stuff should take us by surprise. Because Jesus said in Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 28, he says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in, in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, amen, distress of the nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves will begin to roar. And then verse 26, he said, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. For the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then in verse 27, and this is where we get our hope. And this is where we get our comfort. He said, and then Shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory? And in verse 28, he leaves a footnote. He says, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your head, for your redemption draweth nigh. Saints of God, are you looking up this morning? Ah, glory to God. Amen. I understand there's a lot of fear. I understand there's a lot of concern. But we have been given instructions in the word of God in terms of how we must conduct ourselves. And as we conduct ourselves, we must remember to look up because our Redeemer draweth nigh. I want to go back to the old days when the saints used to greet each other that the Lord cometh. And they used to use this phrase that said, Maranatha brother maranatha sister which means the lord cometh my brother uh, the lord cometh my sister amen and so i just want to encourage you this morning be sober put on the breastplate of faith and love and look onto the hope of our salvation oh lord our eyes are up on you. Let's look unto the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the word of God today. Thank you for stirring our hearts. Thank you, Father, for renewing our hope and our strength in you through your word. I pray for every person under the sound of my voice. I pray for every person Ah, glory to God, that may be watching via social media, that you would stir their hearts, that you would put a longing in their spirit, a thirst, a hunger to seek you like never before. For we have certainly entered into a new normal, and it's going to require more of us in your face in order to project ah, the light of Christ in this untoward generation. Now, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to pray this prayer for me or with me. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ, that God will raise him from the dead, he said, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. It says, so then, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you have that desire this morning to give your heart to Jesus, repeat after me, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge today that I am a sinner and I can't save myself. But I give you honor and praise that you have made a way and have given us access back to you through your Lord, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I ask, Lord, 
that you would cleanse me of all of my sins, purge me from all of my unrighteousness, and come into my heart and live big in me. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit and teach me your ways. For your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And I want to thank you today for receiving me as your child. Now, if this is the first time you've ever prayed that prayer, I want you to send us a note, send us a message, amen, and say, hey, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior today because we want you to hear from us. We love you today, saints of God. Stand firm in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And let your light so shine among men that they may see your good works and glorify God. God bless you. Thank you for watching. I look forward to fellowshipping with you again. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, saints of God. We certainly thank you uh, for being with us this morning. To my International Harvest Church family, we love you. And we thank God for you. We certainly miss you. Amen. And we look forward to when we can all come together again and to fellowship. We want to encourage you to be with us again on next Sunday, same time at 10 o'clock, where we will be here praising the Lord and preaching the word of God. Yes, I also want to remind you that if you visit the website, you'll be able to see um, where we're, how we're conducting uh, the, the rest of our services, our prayer time, our Bible study, the number to call in. We're not going to stop praying. We're not going to stop uh, sharing the word of God. We are, we are compelled to do it in this season. Amen. Come on, let's pray for the people. Father, yes. in the name of Jesus, we yes, thank Father. you and honor you. We ask that you would keep them yes, God, as we journey through this season. Yes. But Lord, we know that your arm is not too short. And you are not slack concerning the promises that yes, you have Lord. given the body of Christ. Yes. We know, Lord, that you will continue to provide even through this season. Yes. Yes. So we bless you, we honor you, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Be cultivated Amen. to grow. And empowered to go. Amen.